Hello, this is episode two of the IP section of our series, Welcome to Germany. After having talked about patents in the last episode, let's discuss the more elusive trade secrets, often but not always a precursor of a patent application, or an alternative to patents if one wishes to avoid the publication of a development or invention that is required when applying for a patent. Of course, trade secrets are not limited to theoretically patentable inventions, but can also be customer information, non-technical know-how, financial information, and much, much more. Uh, another advantage, aside from not being published, uh, that a trade secret can have, that is that trade secrets are not limited in time like a patent. Theoretically, they can be protected forever unless they lose their status as a secret, of course. For a long time, German law only dealt with trade secret protection in the context of the Act Against Unfair Competition. This law included quasi-criminal provisions concerning the misappropriation and unauthorized use of trade secrets, but it has now been replaced, so let's not dwell in the past. Suffice to say that the protection afforded to trade secrets was not as comprehensive and clear as it could have been. The newly implemented Act on Trade Secrets in Germany, based on the EU Trade Secrets Directive that's been around for a while, does provide for more comprehensive protection of trade secrets than the previous outdated laws did. However, to have sufficient protection, or any at all for that matter, businesses need to comply with some change requirements and should carefully examine how they can improve their processes and measures of de facto protection going forward. As a prerequisite for protection, the Act demands proper documentation of reasonable measures to maintain the confidentiality of trade secrets. It does not, however, say what measures are reasonable, and because the law is still new, there is little to no precedent, and we really can't rely on past precedent very much. It seems safe to say that uh, stringent confidentiality provisions in agreements with employees, customers, suppliers, and really any other partners that get access to trade secrets are one of the things that any reasonable business should have in place as part of the bare minimum of reasonable measures. Likewise, physical access restrictions and controls to trade secrets should certainly be in place. No business can reasonably expect its secrets to remain such if unauthorized personnel can just waltz in and have a look at recipes, customer data, formula, or the like. Similarly, if trade secrets are stored electronically, password protection, state-of-the-art measures to prevent hacking, and similar things should be standard by now. Still, what exactly is reasonable in each case may vary considerably depending on the industry, the nature and the value of the trade secret itself. For example, for a small business with limited financial capabilities and resources, it may be reasonable to simply lock the door and make sure that its computers are up to date and run off-the-shelf protective software. On the other hand, even a small company may have secrets that are so valuable that they require stricter and more comprehensive protection, even if the resources are limited. If a multinational company with multiple production facilities, research facilities, and extensive integrated IT infrastructure, on the other hand, had only very basic secrecy measures, that would certainly not be reasonable, probably irrespective of the value of the individual trade secret. Also, speaking of value, a trade secret that is extremely valuable, think for example, for example the, the recipe for Coca-Cola, it can reasonably be expected to be subject to much more stringent protective measures than a simple trade secret with lower value, such as maybe price calculations um, or agreements with the logistics provider. It's obviously very difficult to generalize and categorize what is reasonable under which individual circumstance. Well, therefore, <clears throat> at this point, each business should carefully evaluate both economically and legally, what measures can be regarded as reasonable, and then better err on the side of caution. 
In order to do so, and to ensure the continued protection of trade secrets, it's imperative to first take stock of those protective measures that are already in place, and then identify room for improvement. Another notable point in the new law is that it expressly permits reverse engineering. Now, this can be very dangerous, obviously, because reverse engineering could permit a competitor to copy the product in question or the process in question um, with relative ease. And since it's expressly allowed, there would be no recourse. However, there's an easy fix, contractually prohibiting reverse engineering, because the law allows for contractual prohibition. But of course, such an easy fix still needs to be implemented, and not only in future agreements, but it may also be necessary to amend already existing agreements or enter into appropriate side letters to ensure that no reverse engineering can occur. The Act also affects what provisions are appropriate in employment agreements, and in that context concerns, uh, contains provisions concerning whistleblower protection. However, this will be the subject of a separate video as it concerns employment law much more than intellectual property. Again, thank you very much for your time and attention, and uh, I'll see you for the next episode in the IP section of Welcome to Germany.